I'm going to call the Monday, January 7th, 2019, Parks and Rec Commission meeting to order. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, first thing, can I get a motion to um, move our Eagle Scout project from new business up to top of the list? Of the list. I'll make a mo oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll make a motion to move 9A Eagle Scout Project Gazebo at Chaffinch um, to now. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. So, Michael, you are interested in putting a gazebo at Chaffinch Island. Okay. Should I go? Yes, yes please. please. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Neese, uh, and I'm a Life Scout in Troop 471. I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about my Eagle Scout project. I'm proposing to build a gazebo in Chaffinch Island Park. Mr. Maynard and I met weeks ago to discuss the benefits of a gazebo in Chaffinch Island Park. He informed me that over the years he has received calls asking to rent the park to host weddings. The proposed gazebo that I will build would benefit both our town and our community by creating a place to host weddings and other types of events in the park. The gazebo will be positioned facing Long Island Sound, making the most aesthetically pleasing background and creating Chaffinch Island Park as a highly desired location. The gazebo has many other uses besides weddings. It could be a meeting spot for, the, for town residents or it could be used for family picnics. It would be a great place for family pictures and prom photos. There, there are countless possibilities of uses for the Chaffinch Island Park Gazebo once approved and built. Over here, I have uh, a uh, floor uh, blueprint of the gazebo that I am going to build. Good morning. What can I say? Um, so as you can see, it has the uh, top view, then it has the exterior <coughs> exterior view, and then it has the inside of how to build it and what it would look like. And this is ranging from uh, eight thousand to ten thousand dollars, which I would be raising. And then, uh, if you flip over your handout. It has the locations that I am planning on uh, proposing. So location one would be the most desired spot, uh, but I, it might be low, too low, and that might be why we go to location two, because that's higher and it's less, uh, less possible to get washed away or anything to happen to it. Rick, location one, has that flooded in the past? I know we, you know, when hurricanes come and hurricane it was, storms. Location two is about where there used to be a, a house mm -hmm. near it years ago. And that's up on the, the up highest on the point. High I recall when Sandy came through location one, there was washout yeah, yeah. in that I area. That well, I was also thinking location one, isn't there a lot of ledge over there? Um, there's some there. You can see actually, actually see some of it, you know, in there. Um, any of the gray area sort of is rock or ledge. Um, like in the middle, it would be easier up, yeah. to get your supplies yeah. up to yeah, instead mm -hmm. of you wouldn't have to go on. Mm -hmm. I, That's true. I would vote for two. Right. The only handicap with two is that you don't have as strong of a view of the sound as you yeah. would from location one. Mm -hmm. Really. So one the hand and then the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's yes, you know, and location three is too close to the parking lot. Yes. I, I mean, but for the idea of, of something for longevity. You know, it's hard for the whole thing so is really pretty. whether you know. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if he's going to go through the effort of building this, we want it to last a yeah, longer and time. I think if we put it in location one, two, it would last longer than yeah. that. Yes. So I think that's. Yeah, the uh, I'm thinking it's a little vandalism if you kind of like put it out of the way, like. My thing is it closer to the parking lot better because it's more visible. They just put it in a secluded area. You know. But it also it, it floods so. through there too, so we have to be careful of that. Yeah, I was thinking more like location two maybe. So when would you be doing this? 
Uh, I'm planning on doing this uh, around May because I have to leave room for fundraising. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fundraising. Yeah. I have, I'm planning on doing this uh, until the winter. Okay. That's my end date. That's my goal time. I mean, your 18th birthday is your, uh, is, is your, is your end date. Yes. Uh, I'm 13. Oh, I, well, we got time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no more questions. By the time he's, uh, no more questions. <laughs> wow, you're way ahead of the game. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I have a son who did his, you know, right what before the... You prefer, what, what position would you prefer? Position one? I prefer location two. Location mm -hmm. one, like you said, it does have a better view, but it's better if it's location two because then it wouldn't get washed away. Now, is there any... Are you thinking about, let's say for some reason, it's it, we find out later and it's not in a good spot, are you building it so it could be easily moved? Uh, is that, was that, have you thought about that? So like I said, if we don't, we say... Well, location two is not a good spot. We want to move to location one. You can take any steps to maybe where it's, you know, you just easily move it where it's not going to fall apart. Um, Isn't it as permanent? It, I'm planning on making it so that it doesn't like blow away or anything. Yeah. So it's going to be into the ground. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you just don't rest it on the stone? No. no. Oh, okay. I take that away then. God may move it where he wants it. Yeah. How wide is? I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I'm I just can't read all these little numbers. I'm thinking about by twelve. Twelve by twelve. Yep. That's a substantial. That's very nice. Everett, yeah, right. you think there'll be a need for this? Like, when people will use it? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Will, um, people do like to get married down there. Yeah. It would yeah, definitely be lovely, especially on a rainy day. Um, Did you say you got married? I was going to. Uh -huh. And it's a good thing I did. We had a tornado. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I had a wedding. There. I had a wedding there once in a rainy. One thing, Mike, you have to do, John, you know this: um, that you have to work with the building inspector probably because they'll tell you, you know, for wind velocities and how it has to be anchored. So a 80 mile an hour, 100 mile an hour wind is not going to take it away as a kite. Yep. So they'll, they'll, and he'll have to guide you in that, and we can help you with that. But that would go through the building inspector. Yeah, I think if we approve it, PNZ right? still approve it too. Uh, I got it from Clotter Farms. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, to have a picture like this, though, do we need to go through inland wetland planning and zoning and all that? Planning and zoning, yeah. Your adventure has only yeah. begun. It may take you to five years. Would we, um, government agencies? Would that be us going or fundraising? Um, well, it, it, w I would help him with it, but technically it's his project, so you would, I think yeah. I told you that you'd have to go to planning and zoning, but I would certainly help him with that. Okay. All right. Sorry, Tara, did you, or Jody, were you asking something? No, Rose told me to forget oh, okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to open my mouth until <laughs> just stop. Uh, well. <laughs> this is really ambitious. It is I ambitious. Mean, yeah, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It's awesome. Um, so what we would ask, though, if we approve this, is that you sort of keep us in the loop. Let us know how the fundraising is going. Let us know how the permits are going so that if you need anything, we can help you out. Do you have a plan for fundraising at all? Uh, so I was planning on, I was planning on do uh, making some social media pages like Instagram and Facebook, uh, to get like the news out there, uh, and to see if people would like to donate, and then uh, I'm also going to do brochures to put around town. Uh, and then uh, some of you might know uh, John Markowski. Uh, who did the Grass, grass Island Shack, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going to talk to him about how some ideas that he had uh, that he fundraised with. We also have the GoFundMe page to try and yeah. work with that as well. John's father sitting right over there. <laughs> John Markowski. Uh, uh, she's super good at, at fundraising account is Catherine Margansky. You might want to contact true. her. She's You get her on this, and she'll just jump right on it. So she can help you. All right. <laughs> Any other questions? So can I get a motion to approve this? I'd like to make a motion that we pursue Michael Neese, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Michael Neese's uh, Eagle Scout project for the gazebo on Chaffinich Island Park. <coughs> I second. Any other questions? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Nice thank job. You. Nice job, Michael. Thank you. Great Welcome. plans. Thank you.
Okay, there's no other public forum. Um, correspondence. We have two pieces of correspondence. Um, one regarding the um, an Adirondack chair at Jacobs, and the other about um, uh, the kayak racks. Both are on new business, so can we just put those aside for now, and we'll go back to them when we get to the okay. new business. All right, can we have an approve motion to approve the minutes of December 3rd? I'll make a motion to approve December 3rd, 2018 minutes. <coughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, I abstain. I abstain. Opposed? And we have our abstention. Expenditures. I love it. Color coded. It's wonderful. Yeah, I love that too. I thought that was really wow. nice. Nicely done. I have one question. What is the GHS security phone? What page is that? What page? It's on the GHS weight room. Oh, okay. Um, emergency. Page six. What page? Uh, page it's six. on page six. It's actually the security system, I think. There's a security okay. system there. That's the, and the reason it's twice, if you look at the dates, we just paid it twice in one month, but one was de December 4th, the other was December 28th. It's a monthly bill. And the, the high school business office, get they get most of these bills, and they just send them over to us to pay. But it's a security system there. That seemed like a lot for a little landline. It's, it's <laughs> yes, yeah, through a phone line, but that's okay. what it is. It's yeah. the actual monitoring itself. It's the security yeah. monitoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had a question um, on the first page. It lists um, the Lake Quantipog crosswalk, but one has a, an October date, so I didn't know if that was listed. I couldn't find the last bills we looked at, but I didn't know if that was correct or duplicate. You know, <clears throat> normally the finance office is pretty good about um, uh, letting us know if, if it got sent over twice. So my guess is, um, yeah, that's for two months. One's October and one's November. It's whenever we get the bills, you know, if, the, if so Eversource didn't send happen. it to us or if we got it after the last meeting and didn't go out here, we could have got it the day after right. the meeting, you know, and it's just whatever if we get it. Okay. Well, I'm glad Tara brought that up because I was going to bring it up in new business. I mean, I drive past the um, Lake Quantipog traffic light every morning. Uh, is it really necessary to keep the thing lit during winter? winter? I mean, I forty bucks is forty bucks a it's, month. It's I mean, green, mm -hmm. green it's, probably, right? It's green, yeah, yeah, continuous. It's, green. it's a traffic light. I think the, the police department wouldn't be happy if we shut it off. I mean, I could check with them. Oh, it's just a crosswalk. Light. I think it's because there's a crosswalk. I know, there. I know, but yeah, there's a light. Yeah, I think it's because the reason. So it's you yeah. remember it's there, so it's yeah. not come June. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah. When did right, that light right, get there? Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, so during the winter time, I mean, it's not being used for any purpose. State road. Yeah, you have to get from the state. This is not Gopher. Okay. As a state road, I, I mean, I can look into it if you want, but I, I think that I think we have to keep it going. I mean, just from a sheer light no, I, pollution, yeah. light I, pollution yeah. standpoint, it's. I understand what you're saying, but I think it's a state road, and we have to deal with them. Yeah. Oh, um, what else we have to do? My only question <laughs> too is just why it just seems like there's trash bags, paper towels. Some are duplicated on the same day. Um, do we order those weekly, or are they getting ordered like? As Russell a, Hall is weekly, a pretty large much. supply, like so we can. We don't have storage. Oh, yeah, have it's pretty much weekly with uh, with Russell Hall. Okay, I just noticed some of them were the same date. What page are you talking about? So, like on page two. Yeah. There's paper towels twice, on the same date with the same amount. Yeah, it's a different invoice number though. You see that the yeah. number. Yeah. Okay, now I see that. Yeah. yeah. I'm just curious, what you know, it just seems like there's a lot of individual paper towels, trash bags, and I just wondered why they couldn't be ordered. But it could be, again, when the bills are coming yeah. into us. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, we have the uh, building next door. Is that possible to be using it for dead storage for such things? I mean, again, I just always wonder if, it, if things get ordered in bulk. We have if it's, if it's permission to use the building. Less expensive that way. Is that right? Okay. Right. Or the parking lot or anything yet. No. Okay. We have, it's, we use the it's up to, um, there's, a com there's a committee. Who's looking into it? Um, I think Gary McElhenney is chairing that. Okay. Are we still using and so over there? they're looking at it. 
Um, some people do, but it hasn't been handed over to us as a parking lot to use. We haven't been given permission. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I'm question. Um, I see on page three we use Killingworth Chugayu. Is that is that sent out to bid and they gave us the best price? Or, you know, why we don't use pages or page three? I had three. the same question. It depends. on There's certain things that um, that we can get there. Certain like like look at the, the lawn overseeder for example. That was a rental. Pages doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it's basically if it's something we can't get at pages that we, we use pages a lot. If you see pages, we have yeah, yeah, a lot okay, of. Yeah, no, I just wondering. Okay. Yeah. Was the NW sanitation on page three? Is that the community center? It's the first yes. purple one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Any other questions on the bills? Nope. What, what that's for clear is that if you remember, we had a backup a couple times, yep. and so now yeah. we're, we're water jetting it periodically, yep. so we don't get that backup. Yeah. Makes sense. It makes a lot more sense than what we've yeah. had to go through. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a motion to ex approve the bills. I will make a motion to approve the expenditures for December 2018. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, department reports. Rick. You want to start with mine? <coughs> um, I only have two to highlight. I mean, mostly I was doing budget most of the month, so that's why you don't see a, a longer report here. But um, the Jacobs Beach platform, um, I think we took that off the agenda because it's mm -hmm. done. And basically what had to be done and completed was the installation of the sod uh, around it. And um, so um, a contractor removed the sand put loam in and our guys did all the siding. So we, we didn't contract it out, we did it ourselves in house. So that's done. So that's done. Um, and then I guess the only thing else I'll hi highlight is number three. Um, Rose uh, and Mitch uh, helped me interview. Uh, we have four candidates and we interviewed for the reception position and Jennifer Knight started uh, Christmas Eve day. And uh, so far she's only been here for three, two weeks basically. And she's doing a great job. Yeah, very good part of the team. And I will highlight number seven. Because I okay. have been really working yeah, okay. Notice on your way out, guys, take a walk down, take a look at the Alexander Lounge. It is painted, it is newly carpeted, it looks lovely. And the look as awesome. does the Leet Room. The stairs look good. Those those are those are good. Oh, they've been done. But those are a couple months probably, but yeah. the, the it looks brighter. Yeah. There it brighter. Oh, you, you, you know why? We have all new LED lights. The all new lights have been put in by a contractor. So everything. Yeah. 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 I yeah. thought yeah. the The lighting it makes a big difference. Uh, yeah, and, and that that carpet, uh, Rose, uh, that was all done by our guys. Yes. Todd, he led the crew, and we had some of the of the other part time custodians come in and help, and they they got it done. Got some carpet done, and they both look great. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on Rick's report? Nope. I was really happy to see that. Report from Tony? Ellen. Uh, one thing I'll highlight, Ellen, is the winter program registration. You see the 900 uh, enrollments. That's about where we normally are for winter. Uh, one thing I will say is that our, our ski trips hopefully start tomorrow. <laughs> Weather doesn't mm -hmm. look great. And I think we have 91. I mean, it's awesome. two full buses. Wow. And we're actually on. I don't want to say we're hoping somebody's sick because it's tight. <laughs> we're kind of thinking that every trip, maybe one or two kids aren't going to make it. Um, I, I mean, I don't hope that, but it's it's a, it's a full bus, two full buses from Adams and Baldwin. Where do they go? They go to Moss Huntington. Oh, it's uh, Baldwin and Adams, age kids. Right. Yeah. So we have one bus stop at Adams, one goes to Baldwin. They it's fill up and they head up. I didn't have to beg Alan for a spot. I went and did it. You registered early. I registered early. <laughs> and often. In November. <laughs> yeah, they filled up. And it, wow. this, uh, this was it, this is the most that we've had, I think, in a long time. Awesome. Having two full buses like that. Well, and uh, Connor and um, Max are going to be going on every trip. They're going to be staffing them. Yeah. No, it's seven years. Seven years, I did that. Yeah, my kids have been there forever. 
Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention for Ellen, she's, for now she's still helping with the uh, room reservations. Eventually we, we, we're going to probably shift that back over to, uh, to Nancy because it's really under that position's responsibility. But Ellen has done a great job with it. And I, so. I've talked to Nancy. Nancy's been working yeah. on Yeah. So we didn't get a report from Anthony, and I understand. He, but He's been sick, but I can I, highlight no, a couple I, things. But Ellen mentioned it in her report. So just to let you all know, did it show up today? Yes, it did. Oh, thank you. I have that under. The, um, the modular has shown up for the workers. The uh, drywall is put in. I went down there Friday. The drywall is in. The yeah. sink is now not. It's, everything is working out. Finally. Just hopefully the next day or two, no right. much will, and then the uh, the uh, contractor for the the tank for the toilet uh, port, the the toilet port part uh, is uh, going to come and look at it tomorrow. So yes, I, I went down Friday hoping to see it, but that's okay. I'm, I'll go down tomorrow. I couldn't get there today, but I'm thrilled that that uh, it's coming together down there. So within a week or two, they should have a place to eat. And a bathroom facility and a clean sink and kitchen. Yes, there will yeah. be heat. Yes. So yeah, that's I'm so happy about that. Okay. And uh, Terry's report. Well, a couple of highlights of the Rotary lunch, and number three from the top there. Um, I think we had 218 people this year, which is the lunch that Rotarians put on every year for the um, seniors, and. Um, um, I think that's the, the most we've, we've ever had. I mean, it's, usually it hovers around 200, but I believe it's 218 this year. Um, place was packed. <laughs> and uh, Terry and Patty did their, their little song that pa uh, Terry writes every year, and we always say, don't quit your day, jo day jobs. Well, this is my day job. <laughs> but she does a fun little song and uh, dance and uh, includes, you know, everybody in it. So it, it was good. Um, one uh, typo on coming up, j j the second one says January 17th, that's, that's the 18th, 18th, Friday, it's a game show, Family Feud, and it's Parks and Rec staff versus Town Hall staff. That's great. Yeah, Matt versus me, yes. <laughs> and I, don't, I have no idea how the game goes. <laughs> oh, great. I hope he doesn't either. Television before you yeah, watch yeah. it first. <laughs> if you look at meals, no um, November, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were up quite a bit with meals uh, this November versus last November. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple things I can report for Tony. If you want me to? Uh, he sure. Wasn't able, he was sick most of last week, so yeah. he didn't get a chance to write. I, I saw. Um, but they've been uh, brush cutting, continuing that. Uh, they've painted in our, our painting slash repairing all of our picnic tables. They all come in uh, in the winter, um, and they re, you know they have to rebuild some. They do that, or, and we're going to build ten more. Um, repairing uh, soccer, the goals, lacrosse goals, uh, mostly soccer goals. Um, and we also did some dormant seating in late November, early December. We seeded some of the uh, soccer areas and we put turf blankets down. Turf blanket keeps the ground warmer so it either starts to germinate a bit or, or in the spring it germinates earlier. And we've done that on some of the areas where we sodded before. And the sod will actually take root through the winter time. So we're trying it with the seed this year. Some of the areas we decide not to sod, let's try seeding it. It's less expensive, give it a shot. and then. Um, the, the blankets are out there. So they, they if you go to Leet, you'll see them on Leet. You'll see them at Bittner. Is that on the high school sure baseball? Else. High school baseball. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. That yesterday. Yeah. If you see white tarps, that's what they're for. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Report from the commissions and committees. So the Standing Fields Committee, anything? Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, do you want to talk about that down at the bottom? Will we get to uh, <coughs> well, do some policy? Sure. I mean, well, I can discuss it any time you wish. I mean, if you want to do it now or we can do it. Uh, or here, we can ask you this question. Anything discussed other than the use policy and the turf? Yes. <laughs> okay. Then share that. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Let me go through my, uh, through my notes here. Um, so I will give you a full report on the high school field. Uh, sort of it will reiterate what was in the in the courier earlier this week. This is sort of, I wasn't anticipating it this, I was, I was anticipating it this week instead of last week. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the committee is, uh, had discussed a, a <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. 
the, the management of the inventory of our fields and project a three to five year plan for short term and long term maintenance so that they're going to take a listing of the fields, uh, show what has been done, what should be done, and plan it out so that it's not just um, a surprise as to, oh, geez, this field needs work. Now, so now they can be a little bit more, um, have a little bit more planning as to what the, the, how the fields are going to be doing. Um, we discussed the the possibility. Um, I, I brought it up here at this committee, but uh, I mean at this uh, commission, but also with standing fields about the, um, uh, moving the Upper Cox fields from the Board of Education to the Parks and Rec Department. Um, Board of Selectmen are in favor of it. Uh, however, there is a cost. There are two two um, handicaps that we have to overcome still. One is accessibility to the fields. Um, can't be accessible during school time because uh, you would have to cross through uh, the um, the Cox mm -hmm. lower field, which is still would be considered part of the right. um, Board of Education. And the second thing that would come up would be, um, and Rick brought this up, is about the cost of irrigation. Is that when the fields were originally irrigated, we supplied the money for the construction of the irrigation, but the Board of Education pays for the actual watering of the fields. Mm -hmm. So that has to be re, if we're, if we're going to pursue this, we will have to anticipate the fact there's going to be a co another cost of maintaining the fields that we had not originally budgeted. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, I mean, right now it is still in the first phases of discussion as to how this could be how this transaction could be made and I guess um, I had <coughs> written down another note that uh, Matt Hoey had said that they have to talk with the State Department of Education with regard to transferring Board of Education to to another department. Why I don't know but that's that was part of this discussion. Okay. Yes Judy. Were they getting access to the field it doesn't get used that much when there's school going on. Correct. So would that be it, it's not a, a major hindrance. It's just that uh, if if we mark it on our map that it's that it's a park, um, and somebody wants to get to the park, mm -hmm. they would not be able to get to the park because they have to cross school grounds. Is it a park, or is it going to be fields? Well, as being fields, it would be part of the part of park parks and recreation so inventory. It becomes public. But couldn't you just have hours? You have hours yeah, that hours things are open? Could use it? And just have the hours yeah, be after all school? Adam or Adam. They're all well, parks. The, the, Adams, you can get you through the parking lot, but you don't have to go through the rest of the field. Right. That's the the only other way that you could get to the back fields on the upper Cox level would be to seek permission from Bishop's Orchards. Um, coming in through that direction. Um, plus, I mean, well, there's issue with parking over on that side. And that's a long hike to come over there. That's that's almost a, a quarter of a mile hike to come from Dunk Rock Road. It's and it's private right. property. So um, I think that's something that, that could be worked out with easily, the, fairly easily. The, the reason that the, the, the advantage to us to have those fields under our control versus Board of Education is that the Parks and Recreation Department can be more use more enhanced um, maintenance fertilizer, bug killers, getting rid of grubs and things like that, which it can't be used now because it's considered Board of Education school property. So the upside is is that we would have prettier fields. The downside is is that it's going to take time for this to work its way, to that happen. Have, um, has the Board of Ed given you an idea of how much they've spent on irrigation? The water part. I, know that. Um, I can get that from Cliff. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I met with the subcommittee of the Board of Ed, uh, I think it was the day after our last meeting. They asked me to come, click room, asked me to go, and I explained exactly a lot of what John's is saying, why, why it makes some sense for us to take those fields over, because um, I was told by the school personnel that the school system doesn't, they don't use it at all. They don't ever go up there, I mean, ever. Um, Except for the high school girls, but high school I mean, girls. Cox Practice. School does right. not go up there and use it for I don't for phys ed classes or runs or anything. Um, and so I originally met probably a year ago with uh, Dr. Freeman, and we discussed the possibility of that coming under the control of Parks and Rec, and he seemed to be open to that. Anyway, then that led me to the, to their board of ed meeting, and they had some questions, a lot of things that John brought up, and um, so I guess they would have to formally vote, you know, to turn it over. 
and then whatever legal things happen, whether it's something right. with the state. I also did check with um, DEEP, and they they saw no problem, no hindrance from their perspective. Like oh, all right. separation was was fine from their perspective. Uh, so they they said it, they didn't see any reason we couldn't do it. The other things that have happened at the meeting, um, Paul Schmidt had stepped down as committee chair. Um, he's taking a, he will remain on the board as vice chair. Um, so the, we will not lose um, his his knowledge. He's been on the board since what, 1996? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. many of those years too. He's, he's been there forever. Um, <laughs> and uh, John Kennedy was voted in as the new chair uh, for the uh, Standing Fields Committee. Uh, the other thing that I had, did, I did not talk at the Standing Fields Committee, but I did talk with Matt Hoey at another situation, is that the possibility of Peddler's Park being removed from our inventory and Guilford Land Trust. They're working on that right now. That's what, that's what Matt had said. I mean, it's almost to the point where um, they believe it's their land anyway because they have, um, in the parking lot, they have a trailhead that is marked as Guilford Land Trust, even though it sits on parks and recreation property. So uh, Matt seems to be very uh, uh, agreeable to have that removed from our inventory. And we have two attempts to do something there. And we haven't yes. been able to do it. We haven't been able to. So. No. Uh, so right now it's it's a fallow piece of land that has no future in our inventory. <laughs> It's just sitting there right now, waiting for you know bad things yeah. to happen there. So <laughs> let somebody else be responsible for it. So uh, that's the other things that happened, other than just the um, the, uh, the high school field and the um, field use policy, we'll, which I'll discuss later. All right. Um, Green committee, anything new and interesting? No. Land acquisition. Nothing to discuss. Technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, community center improvements. So you've seen all the improvements. I think yeah. we've got most of the place. Time too. Yes, we have most of the place painted. So one of the last things that we do need to do, Ellen and I have been talking about this, is some of the um, chairs in the uh, leap room, the arms are getting loose. Some of them are stained badly. Um, and the sofa has been there for 25 years, and the leather is literally wearing away. <laughs> and the same for the sofa in the uh, Ruth Alexander Lounge has had 25 years of use. And when you sit in it, it is not easy to get out of it. And considering it's our seniors' lounge, this really is not working very well. <laughs> so I think within the next month or so, Ellen and I are going to take some trips to uh, some furniture places and see what we can do about replacing some of those chairs um, for safety reasons and for comfort reasons. So just to let you, give you a heads up that that's what we're looking at doing. Mm -hmm. And then we should be in really good shape for the next 25 years. Well, a good time to shop for furniture, in all seriousness, is during President's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, good idea. Because um, the right. all the furniture companies are right. So we're going to look at that. To sell TV, they all have a sale every day anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and we're probably, and we're probably going to look at replacing yeah, the rug that's down there because that's also been sitting there for 25 years. And, the, you know, it's just that the fringe is all crummy and some of these things we need to replace. So just to give you the heads up on that. All right, splash pad. We are just waiting to meet with um, the gentleman that Rick had met at his meeting to kind of be our consultant, take a look at the three places, Jacobs Beach, Chittenden, and Bittner. Um, and then we will report back to you what he feels is our best option. And he does know that he, um, just because he's doing this for free and giving us this information that he's not getting the contract, but there's a possibility we could use them. So we are just waiting to do that. You're not looking at the pepper? <laughs> Mm. No water. <laughs> well, we could tap into a couple wells. No water. <laughs> no water. <laughs> okay. Unfinished business. Disc golf. So, yeah, wasn't the 18th a work day up there? You December 18th? December 15th. I thought yeah, and uh, we, um, Todd was up there with me and Craig Smolin and uh, three volunteers. And uh, it was a lousy day. It was very, very wet yeah. and raining. And, 
Uh, but um, as of today, the first seven fairways are just about done. Wow. Not tee boxes and uh, baskets, mm -hmm. but clear enough that you could throw a disc in there. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and I walked up there with Craig today, and he, he looked at it and said, this is looking great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I'm meeting with, uh, we've got, I think, 11 different individuals in the community have said they want to volunteer to help, and I'm meeting with one there tomorrow just to show him where some of the fairways are so mm -hmm. he, even if he goes up on his own and there's a lot of stuff just laying on the ground it's just dead it has to be moved out anyway and just you know kind of tell him if you want to come up sometime you know come do it he doesn't need anybody there to show him what to do i mean i'll, just, I'll show him tomorrow but um so um well one of the boy scouts uh he hasn't come here yet there's a scout who said he wanted to do this as a project and he was going to come last month but i think he had a voice uh, a basketball game i emailed him today and haven't heard back yet to find out are you are you going to do this because craig wants to meet with whoever's going to do it and can actually they can start actually building not on site but they can start buying the lumber right. and putting things together and or start the process um but um getting the stone dust to some of the remote Places is going to be tough, be tough. Mm -hmm. and maybe a Boy Scout troop with the Bucket Brigade, you know, or something. I don't know, but um, I did. I, I did. I walked it with Craig and um, Jason Michael. He's the one that's on the Parks and Rec Commission in Wallingford, who built the one in Wallingford. Uh, he, I had him come up. Um, I think it was Friday. He uh, went up there and, and met with, walked the area with me and Craig part of the time. Um, and he said that in some of the remote areas, in the one he built, they used uh, like wood decking uh, and then put something over it. Mm. And we're talking about maybe if we can get some of the synthetic turf when the field gets redone, mm -hmm. that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Much easier to carry wood planks, I think, yeah. into some yeah. of the remote, remote areas than to get, you know, a, a yard of stone dust, mm -hmm. which would be very heavy and how do you get it in there. So that's a possibility. Maybe in some areas that it would be a, a little different kind of... of uh, Box. So we anticipate that by spring we'll be able to play disc golf. Well, well Craig. Late spring. I, I'd say I'm hoping summer, summer. but uh, okay. it depends on volunteers getting volunteers to do it. The okay. first nine are, are kind of the easier ones. The back nine are gonna be harder. There's, they're a lot. Well, some are, are, are denser. Yeah. And if you go up there, it's it's very impressive. You look at it. Ex except for seeing some of the brush piles, you you would hardly know that anything was taken down. Yeah. So we've always said the trees mostly like this. There's one I saw today that was about maybe 10 inches it came down, but it was, it was a dead one. It was dead, so they took it down, so there's a stump there. But everything else, they're little four-inch stumps, and it just, to me, it's cleaned up the area. It, it looks yeah. nice. Yeah. It really looks nice. So if anybody wants to go something, go up on your own and take a look, or I'll go up and take you around if you want. It's, um, it's coming along. And uh, um, Craig brought a disc the other day. He was throwing. He said, this is great. This is, I mean, I can get right through these trees. and. So it's, right. it's coming along very well. The other thing, I'm, I have to now just follow up with um, uh, all the people, the businesses that pledged yeah. money. You know, I think we have collected about 5,500, so about almost half of it yeah. we have. Uh, so I just got to go back to these companies now and say, we're ready. We're ready. We can buy the baskets yeah. next week. A couple names. Yes, so right. Let yeah. me know if you need any additional if you want, do you want to follow up with them? And, I will. And just let them know and send it in. Okay. Take it out to Guilford Parks and Rec Department, and we have an account that's going into specifically for the disc golf course. Okay. Yeah. I'll let them know that we are now ready. And then you'll yeah. reach out to the scout that was interested in doing a part of the I emailed him today. Yeah. 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 And the other, uh, James Crosley, who's doing the kiosk, he put the footings in before we had the, free, the uh, wow. frozen ground. So that's ready to go. We just When he puts it up, I'd like to, I also have an e I'm going to email him too, because if he can get that up soon, we can get a course map out there, mm -hmm. so at least people, nice. if they're walking around, they get some general idea of where it is. So we've been getting more and more people uh, asking about it. Todd said he ran into three people in the last week to asking them, "Hey, when's the disc golf course going to open?" Great. So. <laughs> okay. That's good. It's coming. Tell them as soon as they help clear. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> roof. So the last time I talked to you, there were some last-minute things that had to be done with the roof. Are it's we getting there? pretty much done. Uh, Todd told me today that the, a couple of uh, small things that had to be done, uh, they, I guess they came over the weekend. I didn't know they were coming, okay. but they must have come Saturday. And um, so I'd say we're pretty close to, to finished. And um, our architect will have to come back one last time and take a look at everything and sign off. I mean, we don't send any bills over to the finance office 
unless he no. says, no, yeah, they're done, yeah. send them over. So. Okay. Well, this is a long process. Yeah. Okay. But it came out pretty good. Okay, John, you're up. Oh, which one now? Synthetic turf. Synthetic turf. <laughs> okay. So the information I'm going to provide for you right now, um, we had an executive session of the uh, Standing Fields Committee, but the information that I have for you was approved by Paul Schmidt, the chairman, and also by the Board of Selectmen. So I'm not revealing anything that it, uh, that I'm revealing information that may be revealed to, because I had asked that I, I did have to submit a report to you folks, and I want to make sure to have the information. Well, I'm just going to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm just going to embellish a little bit of what they have in the courier, okay? Because the, factually, the, the article in the courier is, is accurate. Um, I can give a, just a little bit of a gray area about it. Um, first of all, the, the mediation resulted 100% in favor of the town. So that's, uh, that's the most important outcome from this process that had, that had come through. Uh, some of the terms of the mediation are bound by the confidentiality agreement so that um, there is not going to be uh, any discussion as to fault, blame, or cost assessment. So uh, that is just going to be completely bound within the confidentiality. Uh, that was not discussed. That is not something I could. That was a, that was given to me as a availability to, uh, but to it's, give to has you. Has it been determined? I guess. I, mean, I you can't again, answer it's, that. it's not something that I can I can share with you. Um, that that's bound by the the executive committee. So uh, the next thing, next phase about this is that the town is not going to be encumbered with any additional cost by this. Uh, the only out of pocket expenses are going to be for money that was spent for the independent consultant that we had hired to investigate uh, the reasons for the, 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 the failure of the field. Um, the other thing, other cost that we would be responsible for is this, if, if we hired another overseer during the construction phase to make sure that um, what's going to be done is going to be done. Um, the reconstruction will not commence until um, weather permitting. Again, the parties have to all come to agreement and be able to come together uh, in order to uh, start the project. Um, and this, this so that's what they would do, that's what they would do in the winter time. Um, it, it was discussed that they could start as soon as they wanted to. So um, we probably don't want to be in a situation where we're in, a, as we were back no. in 2007. Okay, 2018 mm -hmm. so I think they may be a little bit more cautious as to how they're going to be uh, pursuing the reconstruction phase um, unfortunately the other thing the specifics have not been revealed as to who's going to do what and what's going to be done that's all part of the uh, internal documentation that uh, is being held um, uh, by the consent. I didn't, I didn't read the entire article. Is, they is, just said um, the time frame of it getting done? as soon as possible, mm -hmm. weather permitting. Yeah. That's all they would allow us to um, to discuss. And not yeah. to count up it being over for the spring. Not to count yeah. up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Whatever I think. In that's there. that's entirely possible. That's, that's, but that's, that's not been something that I can I may discuss with you. So. Um, the, the, the good thing about this is that, yes, there is a problem, yes, it's going to be fixed, and yes, the town is not going to pay for it. Okay, the only thing that we, again, we have to pay for would be any type of administrative costs that we have spent for the original consultant or anybody we want to have to oversee. What was the consultant's cost? We have, the, the town had budgeted uh, $40,000 out of their town budget, and the expenditures came to roughly, what, 28000 Somewhere in that neighborhood? Yeah, about 30, I think, yeah. yeah between yeah. twenty-eight and 30000 dollars So they did not spend the entire amount that was allocated towards the um, uh, the consultant's fee. So, so then the warranty on, if, if we didn't, I mean, have someone oversee or pay someone to oversee, the warranty on this work will be from the date of it going in now again, like starting over again? That's a good question. I cannot answer that one for you. 
I'm sorry. Really? There, there, there's, cer there's certain things that, the, again, it's, it's part of the agreement as to oh, how they're going through the mediation. Okay. The, okay. The, yep. All okay. the terms of the mediation have not been finalized. Okay. So that's the reason that why sense. I can, uh -huh. this is what I was mm -hmm. authorized to to uh, share with you, committee. Good questions. Well, it's just the line of work that I do that I, that's why I'm asking them. But when I, I know what I the outcome tell you, be. early on in the discussions, it's, like a year ago, that's one of the things we were pushing for, that right. there, it should start the clock all over Absolutely. again. Absolutely. I remember that discussion. Resolved, that's yes. what we were pushing. Uh, uh, my, my, um, I guess my estimate would be that, the, yes, it would start the clock all over again. That the, we that's would not revert thinking. back to the construction yeah. phase that ended back in December 2000. 16. Okay. okay. So um, that's what was available to for me to provide to you from the Standing Fields Committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been a long process. Forward. Yeah, we are moving forward. That's the, yeah. that's that's the message that that needs to be uh, reiterated with the courier mm -hmm. is that we are moving forward. Great. Okay, the fields use policy. Okay. Next one. Uh, draft four was discussed among all the members, and it was approved um, that we would move this process forward uh, to with Rick contacting the um, the athletic associations that would be affected by any changes in the athletic policy, and to have the discussions with them. And um, so, uh, draft number four is the one that we are currently using. Oh, I had Okay, draft number four is the one that, that's currently going to be the uh, template okay. for any future modifications. Has anything significantly changed from no. three to four? Nothing. I don't know what, remember what's at three, but it was, we put some wording in about... Maximum number well, of oh, the one? Number, number of players, yeah. Yes. Number of players, okay. You wrote that, that in on three. three. Yes. This was from the Oh, why do I not oh in a fine. I think we put a, a, a dollar amount for mm -hmm. the fine for. You know, I, I stand right corrected. The, the other thing that we were discussing also is that the the percentage of uh, residents which can 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 um, consist of a of a team town. That's also a part that's going to be discussed among the um, the parties that are going to be the, the the sports teams that are going to be a part of this. So we have a tentative date for that, which um, I think I send a note out to, to uh, commissioners and field committee people, and uh, we're looking at yeah. January 22nd or 23rd. It sound, seemed like either night was okay for those who responded. So I'm, I'm going to send this week. I'm sending a notice out to all the sports groups that we want to meet, and they really need to get a representative there. And it's got to be the representative should be either their field scheduler or the president, not like a coach. Um, and, and can, can I just ask a question? This is—I don't think it's in the policy, but it's a question that's come up in our office. Um, more and more, the youth sports groups are running their own camps, and we—you know—we run a lot of camps, and and they sports groups run their own. Um, and in many cases, their camps are, I, in some cases anyway, I know they're better attended than ours. And it's created a little little bit of debate, well, do we let them do this? And, and part of me has always been, well, you know, as long as the need is being met, it doesn't really matter who's doing it. So if there's a need for a good soccer camp or lacrosse camp or whatever, it doesn't matter if we're running it or youth lacrosse is running it. Um, I mean, that's kind of my opinion on it. Um, but when we offer one and then somebody else does one, it, it definitely takes away from ours. Because, for, I'll just say literally, I'm not picking on Lily, but for an example, if, if we run a, a, a baseball uh, clinic or camp and they run one, Little League age kids are going to go most likely to the Little League one because that, that's the one that's being promoted. They're not promoting the Parks and Rec one. And so, um, again, you could pick any sport. It was lacrosse, soccer, basketball. Um, and in some cases, uh, some of the people who are running the we have at least a couple of coaches that are, that are running ours, then they're also running it through the other organization. And I even asked one of the, co the guys, well, how can you do it with both of us? Why don't you just do us? You know, so, well, to tell you the truth, I, they pay me a lot more <laughs> because we have a scale we have to go on. Right. If it's a private organization, they pay whatever they want or they might pay yeah. a certain amount per head. We don't do it that way. We pay according to our scale, uh, which is, the, I think, still the fairest way. I mean, whether a guy's got 15 kids uh, uh, in one program and somebody else has 25, they're still working just as hard, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
given just as good of instruction. So we pay everybody in the same uh, level, same scale. Um, so I guess we just we're just looking for a little direction. Um, are we okay to continue? Should we maybe even stop doing some of these sports camps if other groups are doing them? And if they're doing them, we, we know that some people are, are making pretty good money on them. And so somebody is profiting. Yeah. Um, what, we do charge a fee, though. They, there is a fee that comes back to our department according to our policy, which right. we're revising, but it's in there. Right. So I guess we're just look, looking for a little direction. Um, I, I have to admit, I've been a little hesitant to go to one of the sports groups and say, you can't run that camp because we run it. Because they do a good job with it, and I know they yeah. do, and they, they get a lot of kids. No, no, they're usually a week apart, a couple weeks apart. I mean, that's one they did pretty good about not doing the same time we did them. There was one comp, like, one year mm -hmm. where one group did it the same week we did, and that, we weren't too happy about that. But well, the, first, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is about affordability yeah, for the so family. That's, that's, where that's, that's the first thing that I think of is mm -hmm. there's a lot of families that are doing ours because they're affordable mm -hmm. versus, I mean, what is the, if you compare, I, I don't know, you know offhand what, what the, the fees are or some of the others. The I don't fees know. Are. But usually no. higher than ours. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're probably higher so, than yeah. ours, so they mm -hmm. can pay the coaches right. more. more. Right. Right. And I, Diane's comment was the first thought in my mm -hmm. mind that we're offering it to people that can't pay these mm -hmm. high prices mm -hmm. that yeah. some of these camps are asking for. They're, that, running, that was the they're running a business. Yeah. Right. 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 We're providing a service. And I feel right. like when we don't have options for people who have right. been priced yes. out of it, it it's just it's not, not right. Fair. It, it kind of yeah, goes yeah. against our mission as a, you know, mm -hmm. as, I a, agree. as a department. Well, yeah. the other part is go the other way and tell these other groups, you can't, mm -hmm. we're running it, or all, yeah. or all sports camps need to go through a parks and rec. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really felt the need to do that. No. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you think differently, then we'll do it differently. But it's, I just, yeah. we're looking for a little guidance, I think. And Mark, I don't know if you know it. I think there's um, Brian White wanted to bring in some somebody for some lacrosse camp. I haven't gotten back to him yet because I've been kind of waiting for this discussion. Because mm -hmm. um, because he does one with us, Brian does, mm -hmm. and I don't know if he's again. I'm not trying to pick any one group, but right. I think that he might be able to do it with this other group also, or he's bringing someone else in to do it. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, they, they, they they typically Guilford Youth Lacrosse typically targets uh, some of the older. Kids, yeah, the middle school, and the, yeah, you know some of the younger yeah. guys. Yeah. You know, my son, for yeah. example, like there, there's really a lot of the camps aren't aren't for his age. Yeah. He's right. part of the, you know, but so maybe right. that's where we could fill a we need because need it's not be uh, it's not taken care of. Yeah, the, I don't know how little league or any other sports mm -hmm. do it, but well, the soccer camps that you run for the the little kids, little little kids, are well attended. Mm -hmm. They are. Not as good. They used, we used to get 80 kids. We're like 20 now. Like the hmm. three, four-year-olds. Yeah, the one up at Bender. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah. uh, soccer club. Soccer club, club runs one for that young age group now too, and and they have a captured audience. You know, the big brother and big sister is in yeah. the soccer club, so the three and four-year-old are going to that. I don't have an idea what their fee, fees are. I mean, ours still works. It's still a good program, um, but our numbers are definitely down. 20 versus maybe 80 we've had before. But I think even if our numbers are down, if it's working, you know, I mean, if we're getting two people signing up, then that's a whole different ballgame. But mm -hmm. I think the consensus seems to be that we should keep continue doing this because we are providing something more affordable to people. I think as long as you're probably, we're, we're working with the, the groups to ensure that we're not Same both on yes. each other, yeah. you know, keep them as spread as possible. Yeah, that would be, I mean, keeping a huge spread, you know, because right. maybe somebody lo is looking for a baseball camp for July and then one for August, August. you know. And they have a lot you of get money. both, yeah. And it seems like soccer always does August because we can't ever do it, meaning that another time of yeah. summer for us to do something like that. So maybe scheduling is more you know? where we should focus. In most cases, the groups have been pretty good. Again, at least one I know has been a conflict, but pretty good about not doing the same time we're doing it. Yeah. Why? Hmm. You get the impression like these outside groups that are having these camps, are they, are they making money off, oh, excessive yeah. amount of money off of the town's back or, you know, we're providing the fields and they're... Well, they're paying they, us. They're, 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 they're yeah. paying us. Uh, there's, an, there's certainly some of the individuals make, make pretty good money. money yeah. the, the guy, whoever's running it. Um, it, it may, I know some money goes to the organization. Again, if it's soccer club running a oh, click camp, like, yeah. they probably get some. I don't mind the youth sports getting something because we, we get back from right. them usually in some way anyway. Um, 
Oh well, yeah, I mean, of course they're going to they're make money, you know, because they're, you know, they're in business, but if they're making too much money off the town's back, that's my question. Well, some individuals make, I, th I think they make some pretty good money. My feeling is if you're going to have all these people in a room to discuss the field use policy, that this is a discussion about um, scheduling okay. and respect for us and that we share their information all the time. Right. We're promoting them that right. they need right. to promote this mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and that and we provide a service. Not right. right. I would hate to see all, you know, I would hate to see these kind of programs yeah. go away because, you know, as a parent, you know, especially I have a daughter who plays softball, you know, there's no options for her other than travel at this at this moment, and and I wish there was a cheaper option, you know. Um, so it, it is frustrating for people that really can't mm -hmm. keep continuously paying for mm -hmm. high priced sports. So it's a great option for for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The office trailer we've discussed the operating budget. We're having a meeting tomorrow. Because that'll take us a considerable amount of time. What time was that? I believe 6.30. 6.30, and I think there was no room available, so we're, we're going to be in the, the back of our office, that little yeah. table in the back, because every room was booked. The boiler room. The boiler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hot in there. <laughs> it's going to be cozy. Well, maybe we'll just talk quickly and see if we can get this done. There you go. Um, the Eagle Scout project at Jacobs Beach. It's uh, yeah, uh, Michael, uh, the other Michael, I forgot his last name now. That uh, Earl, 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 I think. Um, remember, he came and showed us the design, right. and mm -hmm. he showed me the uh, picture of the completed project. I, he was going to install it Friday, so I was going to tell you it's wow. in, but it's not, because <laughs> um, he was going to call me, let me know when it was coming in, and, and uh, Tony went down today to let me know if it was there, and it's not. Um, but it it really looks good. He did a nice job with it. Wow. So, so it's going in soon. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Try to give us a heads up because I think some of us would like to go down and yeah. see this. Yeah. The, the photograph is very, very nice. Oh, good. Okay. Um, just a discussion of some other unfinished business. The the sign for the crew club, uh, the boathouse up at Lake. I think Clinton. we told them to go ahead because yeah, I think we told them to go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they were supposed to bring back a design to us. Is that correct? No, because they, they told. No, I don't think I so. I think we're just looking for the size. We, I think I. They were looking for the size, and they're going to make it. We sort of told them what they had to do. I yeah. believe, You know. Yeah, whatever the dimensions were that you said at the last meeting, I just told okay. them whatever it was, six right. feet. Yeah, I don't remember offhand, but yeah, I didn't um, think they were bringing us in anything. Okay, can I can I just make another comment just since we're talking about scouts? It's real quick. I, I had the honor of speaking or being at a um, Eagle Scout Court of Honor uh, yesterday. It was Tim Weil who built the uh, guardrails around the uh, bocce courts, and Chris Miller who put the roof above the scores platform at the soccer field at Bender Park. And um, I just commented, as I've been really honored and blessed to go to a lot of these, because there's so many projects, because they're Parks and Rec yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. And I had mentioned that uh, in the last year and a half, e there have been nine projects that have either been completed, begun, or about to begin. Nine Eagle Scouts in, in a year and a half. Um, and I, and I, I haven't, Zoe Rue was calling for the Courier, calling about something else. I said, you really should talk to the Scout leaders. There should be a feature story the number of kids that get to Eagle Scout in this community is amazing. Yes. And um, Steve O'Connor, who was the former um, Scoutmaster of uh, Troop 471, he gave a lot of facts and figures, and he said roughly 2 to 4% of kids make it to Eagle. Wow. And in Guilford, it's much higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's pretty astounding. And Mark McCoyak had a, what they call the 100 Scouts, and they, they talk all about, I don't know, something like 80% of the presidents of the United States have been Boy Scouts, or you know, I mean, all these different big numbers, and um, it just says a lot about the Scout Scouting organization. And I, you know, I just always highlight that there's so many kids that make it to that level, which is a real tribute to the parents, the leaders, and the kids in this community that they stay with it. And yeah, uh, so these are two great projects. I mentioned for to Tim Wild that you know the we have 40 plus seniors playing there in Bocce, and they love having that nice guard royal, or even just people driving to Jiggins Beach see a much more attractive right. thing than, than the splintered, loaded uh, old telephone poles that were there. So, so these are great, great projects, and uh, and we got more to come. It'd be so. neat for them to do a you know a feature article not on a particular Eagle Scout, but just say the last 20 years In of general, all the projects right. that were done. Right. Because I think people forget yeah. and don't realize yeah. how many there there yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. So we we are I think we're just blessed in this community to have that number 
of scouts and, and so many of them doing projects for us. Okay, new business. Ever onward here. The Eagle Scout project we've talked about. With the room reservation policy. That was in our packet. Can I just ask a question about the, Eagle, the gazebo? Is the town plan like you can rent it out, I assume? Like to be able to rent it out so there's not... We talked last year about, and I never came up with a new form, about um, maybe starting to rent Chaffage Island because we get yeah. Yeah, yeah. more requests for weddings. Now if we have this as a focal yeah, point, yeah. I think now it's a more a reason that we yeah. got to think Wedding about um, either putting it on the form that we have for Jacobs Beach and just have that another spot with the same fee or something different. But um, yeah. I think we, we now have another opportunity there. If, if he, not, when he builds us. Not to burst your bubble there a little bit, the idea of, of the Eagle Scout project is put it there for community service, not for profit. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, boat racks, and we charge for the boat racks. Yeah, well, I'm, boat I'm, racks. Just, I'm just saying that we you charge know, people to pay boxing. It's not to make a profit. It's basically, it, it, I, it's think, I think, well, not so much maintenance, but there are a lot of people that like to use it. There are people who do have their weddings there. And I think we do have to have them book it because what do we do if two people show up on the same day and want to get married at the gazebo? Yeah, yeah. And then we have a problem. That's what I, I, was, I, was, I was thinking about that. So more than the money, up, it's, you know, we need to have some control yeah. in some ways. There was no gazebo in the conversation. Yeah. We had to talk right? about that too yeah. another yeah, but time. Claire, yes. like you just mentioned, but what about maintenance? I mean, in 20 years, the gazebo is going to look pretty cruddy if it's not maintained. Well, that's, that's just so like when you charge a fee, well, we that's maintain. where... I mean, yeah, it's just like the just like the uh, Lake Quantipog with the uh, pavilion up there. Yeah. That was built by scouts right. Right. twice. Yes. I mean, so right. once right. it did fall down, and right. somebody was built a fee to write that out. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm just, I mean, I just wouldn't. I just feel a little uncomfortable rushing mm -hmm. to all of a sudden say, "Oh, we're going to get a gazebo and start charging mm -hmm. for it." Now, no, the, I, but I think it's mm -hmm. no more than we would do with any of our other facilities. I don't think okay. we're going to. But again, the, the spirit behind the scouting is is, is, is for community Absolutely. service. I mean, it's, it's not for a for that's also, the, that's also the spirit behind our parks, too, mm -hmm. is we're not looking to make money renting these things out. They're more to maintain them and to control. As I said, you know, you can't have three people showing up to use the gazebo or three people showing up to use a pavilion on the same day. So we have to have some sort of management. management. But, but I think to John, yes. to your point, John, I think if, like, if somebody want to go up there and with a book and just sit in the gazebo oh, yeah. and read, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're right. talking about yeah. groups. If groups want to reserve it, they, right. there should be a fee for it. Yes. Yeah. As, as we did with anything else. Yeah. yeah. I agree. So we're back to our room reservation policy here. And it may just be done without you know Right. So, so some of the issues, um, and Ellen, because she's been doing these, she she's been noticing some things, and we've been talking about it. And said, yeah, you know, we we gotta we gotta think about that. F for example, um, when we first started reserving rooms in this building, it was for Guilford residents only. We've expanded that over the years, and and if you have it here, you see um, we have a non-resident fee now, so non-residents can reserve it. But in according to our policy in the back, not more. Uh, 30 days uh, out or whatever. They can't like call today and say, hey, I want to use a room tomorrow. Um, but um, we're also getting non-resident nonprofit groups. And we found out that, and I won't mention the group, but there was a group that um, it was really their employees that were meeting here. Some of them were in Hamden, some were in Westbrook, and they were coming here like almost weekly or at least th twice a month having a lunch meeting and using our space, and they were not even in Guilford. They were used this as a neutral spot, basically, and, not, and there was no fee being charged to them. So I started thinking, ah, well, maybe the non-resident nonprofit groups should pay something um, because taxpayers are paying for this building, and non-residents are using it. Whether they're a nonprofit or not, they're using our building and not paying anything for it. So we thought that we should maybe think about that. Uh, we also thought that we should think about what, how do we define a resident? Like with Jagos Beach, we say a resident group is 60% Guilford residents. But in here, if a resident res 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 sorry, reserves a room, <laughs> there could be 90% of the people coming that aren't Guilford residents. So it's really not a Guilford group. It's one person's Guilford, and we're charging no fee or whatever the resident fee is. So we thought, well, should we define it to be consistent with Jacobs? Should we is. have a number? On the back, it says the facility is available for use by Guilford groups with at least 60% Guilford residents. Oh, you're right. Well, I think we need to put that on the front here. Um, 
Well, that's good for groups, but if it's an individual, uh, groups, yes. I'm talking about more if it's an individual that reserves it. So, like, if I was having Oliver's party, that's and what you're talking about. Eighty percent like of the people. Eighty percent of the people are yeah. because we just moved here from yeah. New Haven. Right. So, okay. I don't know how we confirm that. I mean, how would know. we? How would we control yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, and think about it. You're going for resident. It's kind of one of the perks of being here. You know, you, oh. you're as a taxpayer. You mm -hmm. know, you you can use the space. Well, I mean, I as a regular thing, I'm, yeah, a one-off is one thing. But as a regular thing, like like a work meeting, like you were saying, a work meeting is a little yeah, it's a little, little that's a little right? over right. the top. Yeah. Go to a restaurant. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I think. Yeah. I, I, I'm more concerned more, I think, about the non-resident, non-profit groups that are, and there's more and more of them using our building. Where are they, now. like, when they come into the building, where are they meeting? Um, well, there's a lot of different groups, but uh, one yeah, of them I mean, is, the one, this one particular uh, one I, I think maybe in the Quantipog room or the keeping room, is because if they're having a meal then or lunch, whatever, we don't usually want them in a room with right. a carpet. So it's probably keeping room or, or Quantipog. I think the recurring meeting need to look into yeah, it a little yeah. bit, but for, yeah. like, a, you know, birthday party, you know, That's pasta different. dinner or something, you know. Well, we're great. Okay, so the question, so, so as, as far as the fields go, non-residents can rent the fields, right? Can not, like, can a non-resident group uh, rent the uh, field at Leap to play the soccer tournament? Yes, they have a higher fee. Right, yeah. And the they same with charge. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have no affiliation with the town at all. Right? right, so yeah. something that like that, thing? we should yeah. not be a nice guy and just charge the market rate. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, so they're using the field at a reduced rate. The taxpayers are paying, they're subsidizing out of towners who don't pay taxes here. And can we just like in this building here? Unless you're a resident, you can't rent it. Unless you want, unless we, in that case, we should make money. Then we should. Be, we should turn it into a business. If someone from out of town is going to rent a building in here, we should charge them a market rate. It, like, and we are. We're charging fifty dollars versus no fee for a Gilford yeah. resident on a weekday. Yeah, it's free. Oh, I'm sorry, nonprofit, no fee. I'm sorry. Uh, if it's a private, like an individual reserving a room for a wedding shower or something, it's thirty-five dollars an hour. A non-resident pays fifty. So we already are charging mm -hmm. more. But I'm talking more of the nonprofits because right now. We, nonprofit just covers anybody in the state, really. We mm -hmm. haven't differentiated Guilford nonprofit versus non Guilford nonprofit. And I'm just thinking we maybe we should think about that. And um, I was just going to suggest that I'm throwing it out for discussion. If we do a non resident nonprofit, maybe we have them at the same rate as the private, $35 mm -hmm. an hour, mm -hmm. uh, all the way down, even on weekdays. A Guilford nonprofit, if you go down to weekdays, dinners, functions, mm -hmm. dances, whatever. Guilford nonprofit is 20, maybe it's 35 for a non resident. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, I mean, 50 we're charging for a non, a Guilford nonprofit weekend fee for a, a, a dinner or a dance or a performance or something. I don't know if we do the same, if we just keep that for nonprofit, non resident, we bring it to like $65 or something, like the non resident fee. So, so my, my question would be, would be okay, so if they have the room for four hours, right? A non resident has the room for four hours. What's it cost in the town to have that, you know, to heat, to heat the building, cool the building, to hire a custodian? You know, what are the costs for that four hours? And figure out, you know, ballpark figure, figure on that, and then based on that, then charge a rate. You know, the custodian, the heat, the cooling, the maintenance. Well, it's a weekday, the building's already open. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. So that stuff is kind of figured in. It's like we're just throwing a fee out there, but we really don't know. I mean, what's so, that? So fifty dollars you know, an hour would certainly yeah. cover anything that you're because the building is open and heated anyway. Yeah, you can't. You know, it's not like you can heat one room and not another. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. that's that that's that kind of stuff yeah. is factored into it. The yeah. social functions. It, it just seems kind of wild. Like, 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 a person from out of town could come in here. They don't even live here, mm -hmm. but they're using our building. It just doesn't seem. Well, no. That's why I bring it up. Yeah, it we just gotta, doesn't seem right. If we, if if library. We have, but you can have lunch and have a meeting on Saturday and Sunday, right? Custodians, yes. So they are working anyway. It's not like we're hiring them to come. Uh, well, they're here only if there's something here. Right. So um, there's no set hours on Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning is the church is here, and they pay. You know, so they're here till noon or one or something. Right. If there's nothing after one o'clock, then 
that custodian locks up, goes home, we don't have the other guy come in in the afternoon. It's only if there's someone here. Okay. So there aren't set hours, really, uh, on weekends. So our part-time is really very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the, the fee, to your point, uh, yeah. Lawrence, the fee pretty much, I think, to, to Rose's point, I think it, Fifty dollars covers it. I mean, the Sony is about fifteen dollars an hour, so we're charging fifty. <laughs> we're clearly covering whatever the heat electrical costs would be. Covering, Trash. We're covering it and then making some. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just talking yeah. about, I'm just talking I, about I mean, any any of the money we take in goes into the town general right. fund yeah. as part of the revenue budget that we have. Yeah. So what would be your other programs um, yeah. for a non-resident nonprofit for a weekday? Meetings and reservation uh, registration. You said I was suggesting thirty-five. Same as a private. Mm -hmm. The private is a Guilford private. Right. Um, and the same for Friday p.m. weekend. Or I was suggesting the same thing. Thirty-five. Yeah. And then for the nonprofit uh, non social non function. Social function. We're Guilford well, nonprofit mm -hmm. is twenty dollars an hour. I was going to again just keep make it simple. Keep make it thirty-five. Uh, or for same as private, we can make it 50. I mean, if, yeah. we're making, if we're going to do the other thing, the private, why don't we just make the private sure. non-resident, non-profit part of private? Okay. Does that make sense? So, that, okay. So then we can just change that category, non private slash non-resident, non non-profit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep those same fees? Yep. So now you have three. So three sets of fees rather than four. Yeah. No. We're putting them in the same category as private. So we have municipal it's civic, municipal Guilford non nonprofit, private, private slash non-resident nonprofit, and non-resident. Correct? Yeah. Right. So that private category column, we're adding non-resident nonprofit. Right? Right. Okay. Okay. But then this nonprofit, you have to recognize that's resident. Right. Guilford. Yeah, we'll yeah. call it Guilford yeah. nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. So we'll change that to Guilford nonprofit. Okay. But back to the if it's Guilford nonprofit, I mean, it could be a Guilford group, but it's not all Guilford people. We're just talking about who's making the reservation, whether it's a total outside group or a Guilford person, but it could be. Well, but it, it gets so it gets. It, it said it should be 60% Guilford. Okay, so that's what it would. If it's not, then it, then it's. So then that's. Be but, okay, then we should probably put that on the. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That has to be put on the front. Yeah, put on the front. Because you said it already, and even yeah, we need to ch we need to put that little bit about the sixty percent you resident on, uh, right here on the front, on the front. so that everybody yeah. sees it. Yeah, and yeah. you have to change the wording because it just says Guilford groups. Well, does Guilford groups include right. nonprofits? So you have to right. say. So this has to be reworded and yeah. put yeah. on the that front. That second paragraph there. Yes. Mm Do we need a, a motion to do this, Rick? Uh, I think maybe because of the fee structure, probably do. We probably do. Yeah. All right. So can I can motion to make these changes, please? Can we just go over the pattern? The first one is municipal select civic. Yes. Yep. The next one is Guilford nonprofit. Right. Yep. The next one is private non-resident slash nonprofit. Right. No, mm -hmm. private non slash right. non-resident nonprofit. So it's two categories, basically private. So it's the it's the nonprofits who are not residents. Right. Okay. Got and then it. the private. Then the private and non-resident. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then non-resident would be the fourth. Got it. Okay. Do you have a definition of private? It, it's basically individual. It's, it's, it's not a group. So, so it's birthday parties or, or wedding, um, baby showers. Mm -hmm. um, it's also been commercial, like if uh, somebody's doing a financial planning seminar, or something mm -hmm. like that, that's mm -hmm. a private. Hmm. It says private resident. Now, do you charge the other day the blood mobile was here? Do you are they do you charge for them to use the room or is it just on gratis I, for I what they do? I think we did do? not. Um, I mean, yeah. That, no. I think we didn't. Just a non. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It was a weekday nonprofit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, the municipal civic that municipal or civic municipal obviously. Is any town group, you know, or any board of ed, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. civic? We've defined it as groups like youth sports groups, Rotary Club, you know, groups that are it's nobody's not getting paid. paid. Mm -hmm. They're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. and they give back to the community. Yep. Rotary, right. um, you know, um, uh, Cub Scouts. 
Scout, yeah, Scouts, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts. Uh, I'm trying to think of another one, just thinking of American Legion. You know, yeah. those kind of groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we can can we get a motion again? Can I get a motion to make these changes? I'll make a motion to make changes to the community center use form of changing private to private non-resident nonprofit. Any other discussion or questions? All in favor? Uh, Opposed? We do. We'll put updated, revised yes. on the date. Yes. Perfect. yes, revised date and whole thing. Thank you. That would be really good. Okay, let's, uh, we have our, is there, what did I do with my letters? Here they are. Okay, a request for the Adirondack Chair um, at Jacobs for Barbara Nugent. According to your chart on chairs, there's room at Jacobs. There is room at Jacobs. Is there room for a blue one? <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> <coughs> um, but of more importance is, is the fact that um, I think she does meet the criteria. She's, been, she's done a lot <coughs> apparently in Guilford and has been very active. What is the um, honorary, honorarium or whatever you want to do, the plaque or what is that going to say? Do we have a we usually leave that up to them, but the plaque is, is and like on all the other ones, it's about two inches. It's very small. Okay. Not, it just sits on the chair. Black. It's more of a name plate. Right. And we, we and do have room for a chair. I don't know. I just got this from uh, Aunt Delaney. Well, I think if we approve it, we can then go back and make sure he knows. I'm sure he knows. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. I would think Ted knows, but. Sometimes. We'll check. You never know. Ahead without thinking. We'll check. Okay. So, and what are your comments, questions? Well, if it, me it meets the criteria, it adds. We have room for a chair. So I don't. And she's worked or put mm -hmm. time in for the park and rec. So I don't see why not. Would you like to make the motion? Oh, is that what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> do we, before we make See, the motion? See, I should have just kept my mouth shut. No, <laughs> you're doing fine. Before we make the motion, should we, is there a, any consideration like the, the to match the Adirondack chairs that we have at the beach? Or oh, definitely. Assumed no, it no, was the same blue that's already, already yes. there. Yeah, I just, yeah. 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 It would be the same, yeah. 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 That's sort of, I thought that was what I was saying. Yeah. It's not one of those oversized yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So, no, it's going to be just, it'll match the others, that's except hopefully it's going to be blue. Yeah, the one that's six feet tall. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to have. <laughs> so, Judy, the motion, please. I make a motion that we allow Barbara Nugent to place a Adirondack, Adirondack chair <laughs> at Jacobs. In blue. In blue. Second. Okay. Any other discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Do we have to approve the location? I think we place them, don't we? When it's at Jacobs, we place Tony them. Tony would place yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. They, they move around. We, you know, we, uh, when they're they're pretty portable. Here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, they'll go, yeah. It's a treasure hunt every year when they go out to find out where your chair is. <laughs> okay, you know. Something to do. Something. I was just saying, exciting, exciting. Okay. Uh, request for boat racks at Lake Quantapong. That was a, another letter that came. You know, the funny thing is when I read this, I said, why haven't we thought about this before? I mean, it seems like it would be a natural thing to do to have a boat racket for those who would that rather do fresh water rather than salt water kayaking. And, that's, that's the, and I drove by there again the other day. Where, where do we put them? My only thought of, because I'm there every day. Over Quite the a lot. Because <laughs> that's my new home. Um, it would be the little park area when you pull in where the gate guard sits. But then mm -hmm. that is used quite a bit for people to sit and picnic. But I mean, well, I if you weren't going to get crazy and put like 20 boat racks that you have down at Jacobs, if you were going to just put one or two, I don't think it would be. Well, I think crazy. if we do, it has to be more than one or two. 
She had asked that the bowl loss, and I, I, I emailed it back. That that, that's not our property. Yeah. Land, uh, but I was thinking more of the grassy area to the right of the to beach. Because right right. you don't want to have it on the other side of the, of the road. Are we, that's ours? Yeah. yeah. Outside the fence? Yes. That well, little grassy area. Even we tell people not to go there? <laughs> we well, that's because <laughs> we have no lifeguard there. I mean, that's you know, no, so uh, technically part of the, the beach. Area, yeah. It's outside the swimming well, area. So. We would have to fence in that area, then. Because right now, that's pretty much considered community property. Anybody and wants to walk fishing, in there for right. f fishing. Well, fishing there. And there's not really, I mean, because we fish there. there. Um, um, there's not a ton of room. For no, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm no, I just don't think there's that much room to put more than one, mm -hmm. one rack, rack there. On, rack there. I mean, kayaks aren't tiny. Right. That would be, that would be squeezed in very yeah. And I mean, in your point of not wanting to be on the other side, well, mm -hmm. people cross the road now with their boats to get there. That's where they launch from. So, I mean, they're already using the parking lot to, so. Well, the, the only other hard part I could think of is, you know, taking a portage of a kayak across through the, through the kids and the, the parents that may have blankets down on oh, the no, beach. no, they don't take them through the beach. They, 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 they park in the there. parking lot and then they carry them, like the paddle boards are huge. And it's all summer long, people are crossing the road with their paddle boards. And they go along the bent, um, fence and they go onto the that little grass fence. area. Right. And that's where they're launching from. They're not going onto the beach because they know that's a big no-no. Okay, so, yes. Lawrence? What stood out to me when I read this uh, the other day when I got my packet, it says, I have some out-of-town friends who are very interested in leaving their kayaks at Lake Quantifax, so we're going to put boat racks up for out-of-town residents? I mean, it's just... I mean, I can understand if we had a request, we had a request from people in town that want to... Oh, I'm all for it, but we're going to put boat rack up there for out-of-town residents? It, it's, it's a... It's not a town lake. It belongs to the state of Connecticut. Oh, it does. We only own that. But we only own that beach. little beach. That's the only thing in that the we have. In the grass area, we own. Yeah. yeah. In the grass area. Okay. Um, so where would that be? that that <laughs> that lake is managed by the state of Connecticut? Then they should go. Then they should go to the state of Connecticut. <laughs> they should I mean, go to the state of Connecticut. Uh, well, they're not being managed. The lakes right now in the state of Connecticut. Unfortunately. Well, yeah. That's, that's why right. we do the weed control. That's why, the state right. doesn't. But um, if it goes anywhere near the beach, it, that, that we generally are controlling that property there. So it would be fine. our responsibility. We would, if we put the racks there, we would have to rent them. We would have to take care of them. Right. Do we rent any of the spaces at Jacobs to out of town? Well, right? they're, if they're available, there's a, a separate fee. It's double right. for non-residents. Right. I don't know that any non-residents can get out of because they're they're booked solid by residents. Right. Two hundred thirty-seven. So residents right. have right. preference. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and Madison has the same policy too. Madison residents get first if there's anything um, open. Then at the at the surf club, then you can. I think our biggest challenge here, though, where? is where, where to put these. Because yeah. you don't want to put it in the parking lot. Because you don't want to yeah. lose no, any space. No, we can't space lose the parking lot space. space. So you, you can't, can't put them up on top of the hill. That right. would be silly. Um, so it would. I mean, your real only option if you're going to put more than one is that little grassy area behind or next to the um, gate guard. Unless you eliminate the staff parking. <coughs> right. Yeah, I, I still think I, I, I would more advocate for it to be on the grassy area next to the beach. Yeah. I mean, that makes the most sense to have them there. Because then they're just, like at Jacobs, mm -hmm. they're just carrying them 10 feet to get them to the water. But there is another th thing we really should consider, and you know, because you're up there a lot clearer, is that that parking lot gets full. And yeah. sometimes the, swim, the beach is closed, not because there's no more room in the beach, but there's no room mm -hmm. in the parking, parking lot. lot. Or it could happen the other way too. The parking lot may not be full, but there's so many people in the water. Mm -hmm. The lifeguards don't feel they have to do what they think is safe. safe. And if there's yep. gets to a point where they don't think they can safely guard the water, mm -hmm. they close it down, and there may be right. there could be room in the parking lot. But and then if we put it on that grass area, are we now are our lifeguards now responsible for watching right. people get in and out of we don't do that it area? Us. Okay. Yeah. Because they're separate, you know, they're on either side of that jetty, okay. that Jacobs. And it's really kind of, I'm, I'm just throwing out a, another thought is it's like out, the boat rack would be out I, there, I vandalism, or, you know, how needed. are you going to yeah, prevent that? At least at Jacobs Beach, it's, right. be a I don't lot know of whether you want to say out. tucked away, but you're not going to have as much of the public going by. But then if someone wants to kayak out and you ha and they have it there but they can't get in the parking lot to park their car so now it's there's their kayak they can't get to it mm -hmm. because there's nowhere to park it right. just doesn't seem to make right. much sense yeah to parking me. definitely could be an issue it, you know boat racks 
Have you seen yeah, anybody else request that? We've got requests. Requests. We only, we only this have this first one request, request I've heard. This is novel. Yeah. This is the first time yeah. in yeah. Yeah. all the years I've been it's on the nice, It's a nice idea. Yeah, I think if we had the real estate, right. there's a yeah. lot of challenges. I agree yeah. with you. I think, I think the challenge is, I, I like the idea. I think it is a good yeah. idea. Because yeah. the people who live up that end of town, it's nice. But the there's too many challenges. You know, like you said, the place gets the crowded. There's yeah. really no yeah. place to put it. It doesn't seem like a practical that, uh, thing for us to do. Sorry, Liz. That, 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 that um, boat house at, at that end by the by the boat launch, that's right. not ours, right? That's, that's, so, that's Chogan's or State. Yeah, so. I mean, if, if, there, if there was a piece of property that had sufficient amount of room, it would be to choke folks because yeah. mm -hmm. um, they're, they have access to the lake, they have a big boathouse there, they have a so large parking lot. That parking lot gets full, like, with the, right. they bring the buses in there, Correct. and there's the parents that want us to view, so it gets full too. I, I have a feeling that has been grandfathered back many generations. And, and we do have so, kayaks that people can use around right. the beach. Exactly. So, right. so, yeah. so it seems to me that probably we're all sort of in nice consensus idea. that this nice is idea not, way not kind of really the, the way to go at this point. So, Rick, maybe you can just respond and explain yeah. the reasons why we think this is really not going to be feasible, feasible <laughs> for us. You know, basically, as you say, you know, we, where would we put them? We really don't want people walking across the roads with them. Uh, the parking lot gets filled. I mean, we have a lot of reasons. We have a very limited amount of space there. In the areas, it tends to be crowded. crowded as it exactly. is. And I don't think we can keep it safe there. Right, right. Yeah. I don't either. Like, at least at Jacobs, you've got to walk way right. across if you're right. stealing Here it's like right on 70, like, it yeah. just doesn't seem yeah. 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 It's just too easy. Just, now, the only yeah. other, I mean, it, it is private property, but the New Haven Sportsman's Club has access mm -hmm. to the lake, too. Mm -hmm. So if this gentleman or That's person yeah, wants to approach those folks about possibly right. putting up kayak mm -hmm. racks, mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's at their decision. But uh, that is private property. And they might talk to the state. Well, no, the, 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 they run out of parking with uh, boats. Parking boats. Well. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, with boats oh, yeah. and uh, trailers. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah a small they area really too. do. Yeah. Small people fish there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, come uh, opening fishing day, you won't be able to get anywhere near that. Water. <laughs> That's right. That's true. That's true. All right, there is chart. one last piece of business we need to do, so if we could uh, get a motion to add e-elections, because we did say that we needed to have elections every January. I'll make a motion to add new business e-elections. Second, you do. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. So, we need to elect a chair and a vice chair. So... No, can you? My commission is up next month. Yes, but you, I believe, can uh, be reappointed. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't think I can. Oh, okay. No, you, you serve for eight years, unless you're, you're filling in for someone else. No, I, I, so I, I'm six years in, I think. I came mid, midway through. But it said I was expired as of February. Well, no, it, did you look, what, was there a, <laughs> Suzanne was, well, look, I'll talk to you about that. Okay. okay. I'm I'm done. Done. Well, I don't, I think I'm a registered Republican. I had to well, check on that. Well, then she knows nothing about oh. you. The shame. Me either. Oh. No, actually, when I, when, when I was going on the committee, I contacted her. Can we trade her for somebody else? Yeah. No, you're a Republican. I'm like, really? I didn't know that. All right. Sorry about that. Yes. Can we? Okay, chair. Yeah. Chair. Well, can you just remind me, um, does it matter your affiliation? No. No. Okay. It's nowhere written. I couldn't remember if it was like majority. No. I thought it was. There was a time that it no. was that the, this whoever. Is always really it is not, it's all. not written, but it's generally, not written, it but generally it the nominating, ch the chair well, is the, um, well, no, maybe not. the predominant party. Okay. Okay. It was the dominant party would be, yeah. would be the Usually. chair. Usually, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, party yeah. in office. Okay. Sorry, in office. Okay, that's that what I couldn't remember. I second that motion. Okay. All, any other nominations? I'm not saying anything because I have to see all the same things. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank well, you. The, I'll make a motion to have Claire Kincaid yeah. be the. Oh, you just got nominated. Vice chair. Vice chair. I second that. Second that Quick, all in favor. Quick. Volunteers, everyone step forward, and everyone step back. We can move to adjourn.
I do, do have just one quick oh, question. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, cool. <laughs> I always do. Sorry. I, I never know how to throw this into the new business, and I'm, I will be very quick. You know, uh, the, the football the football game's not on for another. I know. I've got one. Okay. All right, one quick question. High school tennis courts. I walked them yesterday. I walked the high school tennis courts yesterday, and there are cracks. I know we just did that last fall. Not only the high school, Adams. But I, I only did high school yesterday, and there's some, well, there's some significant saying. cracks in the. Um, you have the you have the playing surfaces, and they have a green strip that runs down the middle of it. That green stripping is is cracking. Long. Is it right in the middle? Because one of there is a um, expansion that. joint that's designed that's, to be in there. Well, whatever they use, they used a, a, a taping about this width, and they place it down from one end to the other, and then they sealed the top of oh, it. So maybe that's not a expansion joint. I, I don't know, but it is. They're they're cracking, and um, I think we're, yeah. And check Adams as well. Adams too. Now that you mention it, I'm. Supposed to deliver the message. Yeah, Adams is that probably about the third year. It was a, it's a three-year warranty. Well, it's we're about the third year. Yeah. So we thought we were going to replace them by now, and yeah, we're still another year out, I think, before we get you know, our five-year plan. So um, I think we'll have to. It was like seventeen thousand dollars to fix it last time around. So we'll have to see. Do we do it? If we're, we got to make them safe. I mean, no matter what, right. if they're if they're to a point. You know, where somebody could twist an ankle, then we gotta, mm -hmm. we gotta do it. No, the surfaces are flat. It's just that the expansion joints are cracking yeah. and they're, they're separating. Yeah. Um, and, and just one final question: the, the, what do we call it, the math and science building? Are we mm -hmm. still on the hook for that? Yeah. For how much longer? Yeah. Okay. Thank we, you. We, we refuse to get an answer. We, they refuse to give us an answer. Probably. Oh, cool. Well, I know it's been asked multiple just times. Asking. Yeah. People what the deal was, and they just kind of laughed at mm -hmm. me. But that's not acceptable. In my, that's not acceptable. In my opinion. That's okay, motion to adjourn. Motion no, it's adjourned. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Diane, I just wanted us off the television. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I figured so. <laughs>